Hi everyone and welcome back to another review here on Podcast Evolved. Today we are taking a look at what is arguably the flagship item for the fall of 2021, UNSC Wasp Onslaught. This set retails for $37.99 here in the UK, where I was able to purchase it from my friends over at Jurassic Toys. If you find yourself enjoying this video, make sure to like it and also subscribe to Podcast Evolved as we're going to have plenty more Mega Constructs content coming your way soon. The box art for this set really stands out, with a scene which feels like it could have been taken directly from the game on the front cover. We have plenty of detail providing a great look at what is included in the box, and the back of the packaging includes some additional looks at the features and the figures included within this set. It's worth noting that the back of the box also includes a look at both the escape helmet and also the banished chopper takedown, the latter of which Gabe recently reviewed here on the channel. It's worth noting that the new box format which Gabe mentioned in his review of the chopper set continues for the wasp, with the set opening upwards to allow you to access the bags of blocks within. When we open the set up and get it constructed, you can see that we get four figures, a plasma battery in banished colours, a shade turret, and also the wasp itself. Let's start by taking a look at those figures. Up first is the Master Chief, with this version of John coming in a more lime green colour, consistent with that scene on Spartan Jerome from the 20th anniversary pack. I personally think that this colour is slightly too bright and vibrant for Chief, although it is worth pointing out that this figure does have some nice additional printed detailing, particularly on the chest, the codpiece and also the shoulder, which helped to set him apart from other variants of this character release so far. I like it, but it's safe to say that it's not my favourite version of Chief that we've received so far. Next is the UNSC Marine, a figure which collectors will be more than familiar with at this point. This figure is the basic female Marine, meaning long sleeves, no uh, alternate colour torsos or anything like that, although she does include the Miranda Keys head sculpt with a sandy hair colour. This head sculpt is great, and it's clear just from looking at this with the alternate colour that it's going to work very well for Miranda. It's also worth noting that you can put the figure's helmet on, and none of the paint applications on the hair are going to rub off, which is really, really good. Alongside the Marine, we also have a brand new version of the Grunt Conscript, this one coming in a dark blue colour. I love the colour variation here, and I think it's worth noting that the inclusion of both the plasma pistol alongside two plasma grenades for this grunt is really, really nice. Lastly, but by no means least, we have an absolutely beautiful brand new version of a hunter in a banished style colour scheme. This figure uses a much brighter silver colour than the version included in Pelican Inbound, and it also has different paint applications and highlights. I love the inclusion of the banished emblem on the hunter shield here, and I also think that the other details across this figure are handled really nicely. This feels like another really premium addition to the lineup of hunters we already have in our collection, and it is absolutely a figure that you will want multiples of. We also get a plasma battery in the banished crimson colour here, a nice new variation on an accessory which I would love to see more of in the future. First on the build front is the redesign for the shade turret, using the same flexible plastic material used on the chief helmet set for the arches of the turret design here. While slightly more fragile, I think that this works really well. The orange shield pieces on this version of the shade also make it really unique in its own right, and the hexagonal detailing in the energy shielding is a really, really nice touch. I love the range of motion we get from this turret, with plenty of movement in both the elevation of the barrels of the turret, the movement for the side fins with the shields, and then also movement for the turret unit as a whole, with a base swivel as we would expect. This is a really well realised rendition of the brand new shade design from the E3 trailer, and it genuinely feels like it's been pulled straight from the game. 
A really nice touch with this set as well, and one which really caught me off guard, was the inclusion of a couple of extra pieces to transform this into a normal shade turret without the shielding. This really adds to the rebuy appeal, and it also adds extra value for money. I think this was an incredibly smart decision on the designer's part, so all I can say is well done Mega, this really was a fantastic choice. Moving on to the Wasp itself, I think the first thing to note is that this is a much smaller rendition of the vehicle when compared to its Halo 5 counterpart. Whilst this means it does lack some enhanced detailing, I do feel as though the Halo 5 model was far too large, so this is a great compromise in that regard. The build itself captures the shape of the Wasp really well, with the vehicle looking pretty authentic from all the angles we can see it from. From what we have seen from the Halo Infinite artwork so far, particularly the box art, the Wasp appears to have not been redesigned, so this still feels faithful to the design which we are familiar with. It's also worth noting the inclusion of some additional printed detailing on this model, with UNSC logos, small yellow details on the fans, and also a printed console inside of the cockpit of the Wasp for the pilot to use. These details complement the overall build and its authenticity nicely. In terms of functionality, there's a lot packed in here. We have shooting missile launchers on the front of the vehicle, complete with some spare projectiles, and we also have the ability to move the thrusters on the back of the vehicle. The key detail here, however, is the movement of the rotors. They are on a brand new, almost ball joint style mount, which allows you to get 360 degrees of movement out of the rotor unit, achieving far greater functionality than the previous build. This is a great improvement, especially as the new build technique still maintains the ability to spin the turbines individually as well. As we would expect alongside the turbines, the cockpit itself can also be opened, and either Master Chief, or in this particular instance the included Marine, can be placed inside of the vehicle. My only real issue with the Wasp is some unsightly gaps alongside the cockpit. It may be that I built this element wrong, but I am confident that this is how it should look, and the gaps between the cockpit and the body of the vehicle can be a little jarring. Despite this issue, the build itself was a lot of fun, even if it is more refined and less detailed than its predecessor. Overall, Wasp Onslaught is a fantastic playset and a great flagship set for the full wave. It's a nice chance for fans who missed the previous Wasp set to get their hands on one, and it also includes some great figures which fans will love, plus a highly improved model of the Shade Turret. Whilst I have some small gripes, like the gaps in the build of the Wasp, or the fact that a pilot helmet could have been included here for people who missed the gear pack, I think that these small gripes are far outshone by the potential this set offers. It is the perfect versus pack, and it is absolutely a set which I will buy a couple of, as it's a fantastic army builder for people who like to army build to really sink their teeth into. That's my thoughts, but we'd love to hear from you. Let us know your thoughts in the comments down below, and as always everyone, Evolved!